In today's Is This Legit episode, we will look at American Kempo's defense to a grab of a grab. Attack may be. Um, it originally was off of the idea of a clutching feathers type of attack, and there was a Taekwondo technique that does that in order to defend itself against a hair grab. So what Mr. Parker did is to not to really show that, he moved it to this point. And okay, so they're defending against a hair grab. It looks like it's supposed to uh, put someone into a wrist lock or, or more of a wrist wrenching motion. Um, okay, but why not just hit him? Uh, kick him in the testicles. They'll let go. Uh, don't waste any time when you could actually be attacking and causing harm. So the first thing that they're going to do is pin your hand to their body, and then what you want to do is you want to get the upper hand and establish your base. Okay. So the reason why we're doing that is because what we're going to do is we are going to make our hand a pivot point, which means we're going to be going on a circular pattern, not a linear pattern. Okay. So what happens is once he's got that pinned, I can no longer move that hand. So I want. You can no longer move your hand. I'm pretty sure that anyone could just easily pull their hand out of there. And when would you ever find yourself in a situation with a violent thug where you grab their shirt or you grab their hair and they trap your hand and, oh no, uh, they've really got you now. Uh, <laughs> come on, let's make martial arts more practical. I don't think anyone's worried about that. I hit him with the elbow, so if you notice this is going to be a circular pattern. And what's going to happen is I'm going to turn my body and drop towards him in order to hit him with that elbow. Now, I need this hand. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather be hit with an elbow to the lower belly or a kick to the testicles? Or how about a punch to the throat or a flurry of strikes to the face? Just freaking hit him already and pick a better place to hit him than the lower belly. And to keep the upper hand because the next maneuver is going to release my hand and I want to make sure I can keep his hands pinned to the body. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the upper hand pin, which makes cause him to step back like that, get the elbow, pull my hand straight out. Okay, now what I don't want to do is pull my hand back like this. What I want to do is I want to drop it straight down so then I can bring it back up and hit. You can also do what's called nipping the tip, which is from the elbow, nip down as you come down. <laughs> Solo la puntita, just the tip, kids. Let's do it one more time. He pins the hand, I move the elbow, I come straight down, then I reverse the pattern and come straight up into the groin. Okay, he finally hit the testicles, great, but we just didn't need all that other stuff before. Just right off the bat, as soon as someone grabs you, just hit them, cause, cause injury to them right away. Okay, very simple, very easy. Then I wanna make sure that my hand's here because if I don't do that, he can either hit me or if I hit him in the groin, he headbutts me. So even to cure that, I don't want to be looking up like this. I want to keep my head focused at about right here so that if he does come forward, he hits the top of my head, even if I'm not paying attention or something. Yeah, hey, that's good advice. If you find yourself uh, a lot of times in a lower position and their groin is accessible, yeah, you want to keep your trapping hand on their hand, duck your head, smash him in the balls, and then, you know, do whatever the next appropriate move is from there, either going for a tie clinch or if you're a grappler, maybe going for a double leg takedown or something like that. Nothing happens too quickly. So that's we did, do this hit. One of the things you'll see is a figure eight pattern here in order to hit. That's really not the right line you need in order to get the proper backup mass. You should be going on the left right lines rather than a circular pattern. So from there, I'm doing an upper back knuckle to the inside of the knee. This line also helps me with hitting the nerves the way I want to hurt, hit them. Ladies and gentlemen, a back fist to the inner knee won't do a damn thing to anyone. Uh, go play a soccer game and, and count how many times you get kicked in the knee and, and kneed in the knee. Uh, and, and this is a, a game and, and you're going to keep playing. And those kicks and knees hit way harder than a, than a back fist. Um, going for a, a back fist to the knee in the hopes that you strike a strike a nerve and that it actually will do something to your opponent as opposed to going for better targets like their testicles, their throat, their head, their face. It's kind of like stepping over a $20 bill to pick up a penny. On the inside of the knee here. So that would turn the knee out and then... Uh, it will not turn the knee out because the human leg has so much more mass than a tiny little back fist. Uh, it just won't work. It's basic physics. And what I want to do is I want to do the line 
straight across in order to get a punch. More of the same time-wasting crap. Uh, look, every moment that you are that close to an opponent and you're not actually doing anything that matters, it's time that you're freely giving to your opponent to cause you harm. Okay, so enough of that. All right, so how would I deal with this? If someone grabs me by the hair or by the shirt, here's what I would do. If I grab someone else and they grab my hand, here's what I'm gonna do. The famous 16th century samurai, Musashi, who had been in over 60 duels to the death, he'd participated in at least a couple of military campaigns and castle sieges, wrote about how he observed how martial arts schools had changed during peacetime. He saw all these sword fighting schools opening up that were teaching things that just wouldn't work and that no one did in real combat. This is something that we, as martial artists living in peacetime, I presume most of my viewers are living in peacetime, although there's certainly violence out there all, uh, all around us, but we living in a peaceful time, we have to stay vigilant to ourselves so that we don't fall into these overly complex techniques. Bruce Lee said a lack of cultivation leads to ornamentation. So if you're not, if you don't have experience and you haven't figured out what works and what doesn't work, you'll, you know, you'll kind of fall for anything. So what does win fights? Being aggressive and using rapid violent attacks to overwhelm your opponent and keep them off balance until you win the fight. This is the very heart of rapid assault tactics. Folks, thanks for watching. You know what I'm always gonna say. Like, subscribe, go get your reps and become a warrior. See you next time.